If I were to describe Sandy in a few words, it would be driven, passionate, and fearless. I think foremost on her mind is how is that that she opens the door for young people in science. She is the epitome of, of, a, of a biologist who, who takes a large problem and breaks it down to the single amino acid of a molecule and understands that. Endocytosis is a big word, but it, what it really means is how cells eat. And uh, Sandy has figured out how that all works. So this is a 3D model of the classroom cage that I was studying as a, as a graduate student. These proteins in individual subunits will spontaneously assemble into this absolutely beautiful structure. I purified the encoding ATPase, which disassembles, takes apart, uh, unravels this beautiful clathrin basket. The structures of the cell and you know, the beauty and organization of the cell that became my passion. I grew up in Vancouver, BC, uh, Canada. I had two brothers and a sister. My father was a high school science teacher. He would bring home dry ice to play with, formaldehyde fixed animals <laughs> to poke around in, and lots of things that got us, at least got me all excited about science. I went to the University of British Columbia, and there I had an honors bachelor's degree in cell biology. My professor brought faculty members from all over the United States and Canada, including Jim Rothman, to talk and lecture in the class. And Jim Rothman talked to Dennis Vance, my professor, and said, so, she interested in graduate school at Stanford? And Dennis Vance said, well, well, of course. And when I interviewed at Stanford, I had no idea where it was located. I did not know who Paul Berg and Arthur Kornberg or David Hognes or Buzz Baldwin or Bob Lehman were. I was interested always in cell biology and membrane biology, and so I was certainly not intimidated by meeting one-on-one -on -one all of these <laughs> amazing scientists. I met with Sandy when she was a very young graduate student, just starting, and I was tremendously impressed with her. She was very brave. And instead of working with Paul Berg or Arthur Kornberg or one of the great, great famous heroes, she decides to work with this new young assistant professor who's not working on DNA. Arthur actually tried to recruit me in, into his lab. There's a signed copy of, in his book, DNA Replication, uh, to that effect. I was pretty committed to, to do, make vesicles. <laughs> she was the only woman and surrounded by all these young men. But she was the one who was the, the spokesman for the group and the one who was pressing the hardest to accomplish something. I learned to do experiments. I learned to think about experiments. I learned to build models, to think about explanations for the data that I was seeing. And then, you know, how did the design experiments to test them? And that, you know, that's fundamentally the scientific method. I'm not sure I would have emerged uh, as successful from any other place but Stanford Biochemistry. My peers, my friends, were so passionate about what they were doing and so um, supportive. When I first met Sandy Schmidt, she came to me looking for a postdoctoral fellowship while I was on the faculty at Yale University School of Medicine. Sandy came with a prior interest in endocytosis, and I think to not an insignificant degree, the work that Sandy had done as a graduate student uh, really uh, pushed that part of the field forward. At Yale was my first test of real cell biology, where I actually had to work with cells and culture and purify organelles from cells and and make monoclonal antibodies and all these tools of cell biology I picked up working with Ira Melman and Ari Hellenius at, at Yale. Sandy was um, very passionate about what she wanted to accomplish. She wanted to do something important. But with time, um, I think she reverted in a good way back to her interests in trying to understand mechanism. Now, specifically for the endocytosis aspect, I think her big achievement is that she characterized one particular molecule that is absolutely essential to that process, which is called dynamin, to the last possible detail. And uh, I think there's no one in the world who understands that molecule as, as well as she does. That's correct. I was named chairman of the cell biology department at Scripps in 2001 very much enjoyed working with young faculty members and facilitating their success. But I was then looking for something else. Uh, in fact, leadership has been a passion. We 
needed a new chairperson for the Department of Cell Biology. We needed somebody with energy and with drive and who wouldn't rest until she had the best department in the country. When you get a call from UT Southwestern, you, know, you got to be interested. And I have to say, I thought, if I could do a quarter of what Paul Berg and Arthur Kornberg did when they moved from Washington University to Stanford to build a department of biochemistry and to create any glimmer of that culture, I would be a very happy person. So she is a big Stanford fan. She was very impressed by this notion of, bio, of the biochemistry department that students do not get bench space assigned per lab, but departmentally. Right? And what you actually see here is exactly that model. Sandy's work now has turned to cancer and the idea that the biochemical mechanisms that she's described are different in cancer cells from normal cells. And that gives us new insights into maybe finding new ways to treat cancer. What's outstanding about Sandy, besides her obvious accomplishments as a, as a scientist, is that it is never about herself. It's about her environment, about the field, about the people she works with. Sandy is the, the biggest advocate for women on our campus. I believe that Sandy was the first chair of a basic science department here who was a woman. And we now have four or five of them. And uh, a lot of that is due to Sandy's influence. Another good thing that happened in Jim Rothman's lab is that I met my husband, uh, Bill Balch. At Yale, we had our son, Jeremy, and at Scripps, our daughter, Catherine. They've been, you know, terrifically uh, uh, supportive of all aspects of my career, and we're proud of each other. I mean, the fact that it's the Arthur Kornberg and Paul Berg Award, when I saw that, uh, uh, was uh, immediately uh, inspiring and also humbling. Uh, when I look at my fellow alumni uh, who are awardees, I am so honored to be in, in that group. I am familiar with um, the work and uh, uh, reputation and impact of, of those two um, peerless scientists. Sandy worked in her field the way they worked in theirs, worrying about doing the most elegant, succinct, and rigorous experiments possible. That, combined with the fact that she's, I think, achieved just phenomenal success in her career, makes her a perfect uh, recipient, so far as I'm concerned, for an award of this stature. She represents what a great institution can produce. So I think she's a perfect uh, recipient for uh, an award named for two of my personal heroes, and I, I think she's very deserving. Thank you.